This is the Glion Dolly electric kick scooter. I looked at uh, kind of like 2014, 2015 version of this scooter and now we're in 2016. Quite a few things have been improved, refined, and really innovated. So the reason this one's called the Dolly versus the Slalom is that it's got these little tiny wheels at the back. Can you see those? And this awesome like handle at the front so you can uh, extend that, whoop, pick it up like this and pull it around like I don't know, a suitcase or something. Like, I guess a little dolly, kind of a cute name that they've got. And it even stands upright, sort of rests on this little pad that's that's right there on the, the folding handlebars. So very, very cool and innovative. Uh, this would be a space saver for sure. It makes it easier to you know, bring along with you without lifting it up, because it is about 27.5 pounds. It may not sound like a whole lot, but it adds up. You know, I go to the gym and I'm doing curls and stuff with like 10s and 15s. Um, again, 27. So it's it's more weight. Thankfully, if you don't, you know, if you're unable to kind of pull it along like this, you can fold this down and then you can actually lift it up using this kind of the stem right there. So that you can just lift it straight up, stays fairly balanced easy to load in the back of your car or in a boat or a private plane, all kinds of different situations. I think it's about 36 by eight inches by 12 inches. I've got those specs back at the website, but you know, pretty compact and handsome looking in this all black finish. Uh, over here, I've got some of the accessories. We've got a little charger. This weighs about a pound and a half. Um, kind of looks like a laptop charger, two amps, fairly standard for electric bikes and electric scooters you know small enough that you can take it along with you but not super small there's still the power supply bit it's not just a, a straight cord and then one of the options that they have is this little bag and i think it's like you know 20 bucks which isn't too bad a lot of times there's huge uh, expenses that when you get an electric bike or whatever for racks and covers and lights and i, I feel like glan does a pretty good job keeping their accessories affordable so even a replacement battery for this thing is just a couple hundred bucks um, the scooter itself alone, just the basic build with the charge, is only $6.99, which is a lot more affordable than some of the other electric kick scooters that I've reviewed. And that's for the dolly version. If you want one that doesn't have the little retractable handle or those wheels, it's $6.79. So, you know, 20 bucks more and you get the extra feature. To me, that's worth it. That might add a little bit of weight. I think on their website, they're like 25 pounds. And again, my weight says 27.5. So a couple pounds for the extra handle and stuff might be what's going on there. You can see that there's these just standard Phillips screws on the deck. Um, I think I opened one of these up last time I reviewed them and it's just, you know, there's batteries in there and it is replaceable, but it's not something that you can charge off the scooter. You want to take this inside, keep it uh, away from extreme cold, extreme heat to help those batteries last a little bit longer. It is a 36 volt, 6.6 .6 amp hour pack. So decent size, it should get you a uh, good range. And the motor back here is a gearless direct drive, little hub motor in the rear wheel, 250 watts nominal. They say 600 watts peak. I mean, that's pretty awesome. It does feel zippy and powerful to me. I'm not a super heavy rider. You know, I only weigh like 135 pounds. Um, and I, you know, you can always kind of kick your way along to, to help it out, but it, it seems like it would climb all right. I'll get more into that a little bit later, but having a smaller diameter wheel, you know, these are, I think it says 200 by 50 on the wheel, but it, you know, about eight inches, uh, it's big enough that it helps to span cracks and little bumps and stuff, but, uh, still relatively small and, and that kind of bringing the diameter in gives the motor a mechanical advantage for turning it and kind of zipping you along a little bit higher RPM so it's able to generate more power that way. The front wheel, you know, we can get a little bit of a closer look here at rising sun on the rubberized tire. It's kind of a honeycomb interior. So it's, it's not, it doesn't require inflation or anything. There's no tube or anything. You're not gonna get a flat if you run over thorns with this, but it is kind of hard, you know, compared to something that is inflatable like the ET Wow or I think the IMAX, uh, some of those other scooters, they're a little bit, little bit bigger tires. And if you're someone who's over a couple hundred pounds, that might be a better way to go, just have a little bit more support. This does start to get a little jarring um, over time when you're riding, especially if you're riding over uh, cracks and stuff with a backpack on or some extra gear, like if you're taking that charger. So keep that in mind. I did wanna pull this 
little cover out and just, you know, show maybe what that looks like. The button on the back sort of stores into itself, it appears. There you go, look at that. And there's a zipper. Not too difficult. You know, I just had to pull it down enough to get the, the zipper under the deck like that. And it, it might be able to go a little bit further back, but what they've done is created an opening back here so that the rollers can still do the whole dolly action. And then right there where there's the kind of the padding on the bar, you can see that that's uh, replicated on the exterior of the case as well. So that's gonna give you just a little bit more durability when it's standing upright. And there's another opening down here so that you can uh, pull that the handle up. So, you know, really very custom on this case. There's even a slot right here so you can still grab grab the pole if you're, if you're gonna carry it um, horizontally. So really cool bag. And you might be asking yourself like, why do I even need a bag? But uh, if you're riding on the bus a lot of times, you know, getting on the bus and this is wet because you've been riding in the, in the rain or, or slush or something like that, they might not want you to bring something dirty onto the bus. But if you have something like this, it looks more like a piece of luggage. You know, it's, it's a lot, I don't know, it's, it's a lot less intrusive and it might not bother the person you're sitting next to because the water and dirt are all covered by the case. So I think it's clever and 20 bucks is super cheap in my opinion. So that's, that's very cool. I like that and something kind of unique in the world of electric kick scooters, to me at least. I just kind of did the sloppy version and stuffed it back into a little pocket. Um, I didn't line the buttons up or anything, but still, you know, pretty small, kind of stays out of the way. Okay, so let's look at the folding mechanism here. This is another area where the Glein has been refined. Before they had kind of like a quick lever sort of thing. And uh, from what I've read in comments and stuff, maybe it wasn't as strong and as as robust like reliable as as maybe this option so they've just gone with a standard pin you press that little sort of bronze button down slide it out that's it and then you tip the handlebars forward just like that you do have to kind of stand it up and this is almost a two hand sort of a job so i'm gonna put the camera down but you can see there's a hole right there i'm just gonna slide it in and, and you do have to kind of push forward on that stem to to open up that hole there we go. So not the fastest or easiest unfolding and folding, but it does seem sturdy. It's just more of a two hand job. Now we can see that the charging port there on the right hand side, just that plastic cover that flips from for the side. And then we can extend the handlebars, just sort of press in that button there. See, they kind of go up and there are two, two different levels. So depending on your height, I'm going to go to the highest level. There we go. So now you can see it's a little bit taller. Um, feels pretty, pretty sturdy to me. And there, there's this like clamp right here that you can tighten down to add a little bit more strength and then flip out the handlebars. So they just sort of flip like that. And this is where things get a little bit sloppy up here. So we go ahead and get them both there. They're just a little bit more rattly from side to side. And so you, you lose a little bit of like how the responsiveness uh, when you're when you're actually riding and see how narrow they are they're they're not super wide like some of the other kick scooters so your whole body is a little bit more cramped um, and it just that combined with these little bit smaller wheels they're not super small but all of that kind of comes together to create something that to me feels a little bit more squirrely so just keep that in mind also note that this doesn't have traditional like brake levers you've got a twist throttle for power and then another twist throttle for, for brake. It's like a little regenerative brake that uses that rear wheel. There's also no scrub brake, so I, I kind of like that. You can put your other foot on that fender because the deck's not super long, but there's really no mechanical way to just like, oh, urgent, like gotta stop. So I've heard about people kind of bailing on their scooters and they'll go flying off and hit a curb and bend the front of it. That's probably better than getting hurt, uh, you know, but it's just something that takes a little bit of getting used to with this is the regen braking. It does keep the cockpit super clean. There's not a whole lot of fancy extras going on. You just have sort of like green, yellow, red battery voltage indicator on the twist throttle. It's going to be 
a little bit more difficult to tell how fast you're going. Top speed on this is supposed to be 15 miles per hour. So it is sort of a low speed electric bike, electric scooter. Should, should be able to ride this most places and not have an issue. Uh, before we get on, I want to call out the power cable going to the motor. You can see it kind of enters at the side and there's a nice rubber cap, but just try to protect that. That could be a little bit of a, a vulnerability going on right there. And when you turn it on, one thing I've noticed is that you actually have to hold that button a little bit longer. It's not just like on, it doesn't work. It's, it doesn't stay on, you have to hold it a couple seconds, then let go and see how it stayed lit up. That took me a while to figure out uh, on the last one that I reviewed. And they were like, oh, that's a feature. It's designed to um, you know, make it so that you don't actually bump this and turn it on when you're transporting it, when it's all folded up. And that makes sense to me. You don't wanna run the battery down prematurely and uh, end up kick scooting your way home on this because again it's a little bit heavier there's a little bit of drag a little bit of cogging going on uh it, with the motor so if you did run out of batteries it'd probably be better than walking but you know it's not as easy as like an unpowered scooter here's the little handlebar pad that we were resting it on earlier when it was all folded up and just kind of a walk around on the cockpit kind of see it pretty nice stuff all the wires are integrated tucked away kind of run through the frame down here it's a good looking platform you know definitely nice and and pretty professional for someone who's going to use this to transport themselves to work and back before i i kick off i'm just going to show you know there's a sidewalk here with some bumps and little cracks and things you might be able to hear those uh in my opinion the throttle is very sensitive which which sort of means it goes from zero to like full power very quickly. And so it takes a little bit of getting pra getting used to, um, not something that you wanna operate one-handed like I'm about to do, cause it's just, it's like, how do you even do that? Yeah, I'm gonna have to have one hand stabilizing myself and using the throttle. I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we're gonna take it for a ride. There you go. Oh boy. You can see kind of just the wobbliness up front. Um, but it's, there's good room on the deck hear the motor down there whirring a little bit. Woo. quickly with that regen you know so I'm, I'm kind of delicate sort of sensitive when I when I use that so I don't kind of like lurch forward kind of that wobbliness of the bars and the narrowness of them um, I did go over all those cracks and bumps just to demonstrate that yeah you know it's there there's no suspension on this one it's a little bit more jarring uh, and, and again the firm wheels but they're rugged you know so you don't get as many uh, any punctures that kind of thing so it's always a trade-off one of the other things I was noticing is that you do have to get a little bit of momentum going before the motor will start. I thought it was start at standstill and just completely based on weight. I think that uh, in, a, in, in reality it's, it's that you have to kind of get going a little bit and that's safety feature i see it on a lot of kick scooters like this just so that you're kind of stable and got your feet going it helps if you're you know transporting the scooter and maybe you're lifting it in the car you've accidentally turned it on and then you hit that throttle and it zips off yeah i feel like they've done a pretty good job limiting that by making you hold the on off button for a few seconds and then uh, ensuring that the bike won't well the scooter won't get going if you uh, twist that throttle as long as the wheels aren't turning already so yeah. Definitely higher quality than a Razor, something else like that. It's gonna be a little bit more durable than one with an inflatable tube. Um, and it's fairly comfortable, but you know, yeah, you, you feel the bumps and, and things like that. I think that's a good overview. I, I was just really impressed with the price and some of the innovative features on, on the dolly, like pulling mechanism, the cover and everything like that. I feel like the Lion's doing a great job innovating and, and just keeping their stuff affordable. So. For more details on this, all the specs, measurements, and stuff, and other kick scooters, I'll see you back at electricridereview.com. Of course, ride safe.